Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel. I hope you're doing well. We're going to talk about Bitcoin's price and how much further could we go or have we hit the bottom? So we want to talk a bit about that as well as some news around some crypto FUD from a UK regulator talking about you're going to lose all your money while investing in crypto. Before we break it down, go ahead, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, Bitcoin right now uh, bouncing off that $30,000 support level, currently at $34,367. Ethereum back over $1,000, sitting at $1,058. XRP at uh, 28 cents. So if you look at the chart here, remember what we've been talking about for the past couple weeks. We need to see a correction because we were seeing $1,000 green candle days for like uh, a few weeks, right? And that was like, oh my gosh, going parabolic, right? Uh, certainly my portfolio was looking great. I did take some profits around the $41,000 price mark. Uh, I tweeted about it. I think I mentioned it in my videos as well. And we needed a correction because corrections are healthy in a bull market. You want to build support levels, right? Now, of course, the new people the, who are new to crypto are running scared, like, oh my God, Bitcoin just crashed. But when you zoom out, you see corrections happen along the way. Many times you have the red candles. You need them, guys. It's important, right? They happen in 2017. Uh, they happen in 2013 uh, bull run, right? Let me let me just zoom in here in 2017 and show you some of the red candles here, my friends, uh, on the way up, right? Where people were panicking. Same sentiment. You see this drop here, right? You see the drops along the way up. They exist if you go look at on the chart yourself. So be prepared for things like this. You got to have it in the back of your mind. Nothing goes up in a straight line like I've been saying for a long time. And the idea here is that you're once again building new support levels. You want to see where are we going to hit the bottom. Um, I personally think 30,000. I will. I had let me correct that. I had tweeted between 25,000 to 30,000. But right now it looks like it's bouncing off at 30,000. But look, it could go down. It could go down to 25, right? And then once again, move sideways, build support levels, keep working our way up. So long term, we are moving upwards. Obviously, the stock to flow model is predicting a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin price. So by no means uh, am I saying tomorrow we're gonna skyrocket to fifty thousand. We probably got a couple weeks like this, and then we could see that fifty thousand by the end of January. I I absolutely believe that. Obviously, not certainty, just probability. And one thing what we're seeing when you look at the data, and, and this speaks to what I was just talking about, the stock to flow model, when you zoom out, look at a macro level, this correction is a tiny blip on the chart, right? <laughs> and, and here this user tweeted using plan B stock to flow model saying, this is the dump you've all been freaking out about in the last few hours, laugh out loud. And also what's interesting, because I like to show you guys the data, Addresses with more than 1,000 Bitcoin continue to grow at the expense of all others, even as the most recent downturn is taking effect. While you were selling, whales were gobbling up your Bitcoin. Bitcoin is moving from weak hands to strong hands, guys. And you see here the accumulation changes um, has been on the high level for 1,000 Bitcoin um, per, per wallet, right? And here's another chart. Uh, let me we we'll go over here you'll see as um the price took a downturn at the same time the number of addresses with a balance of 1000 bitcoin sp spiked right it jumped through the uh the, uh, crossed over the the price so very very interesting buying the dips and personally i've been buying the dips baltimore ethereum and bitcoin not financial or investment advice you do your own research but uh, I'm looking macro level at that $100,000 Bitcoin price and a $10,000 Ethereum where, um, of course, I'll be taking profits along the way up. So obviously like around 60,000 and 80 then 100, I will be taking profits. So just 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 what I'm doing. I'm just letting you guys know and letting you know how I'm thinking. Um, the other part of it is a lot of Bitcoin is not being sold. The majority is being locked up. So here, 78% of all Bitcoin is not for sale. This is data from Glassnode, right? The research company, they do a lot of on-chain market analysis, advanced charts, data, uh, analytics, trends, and so forth. So the blue here indicates illiquid Bitcoin that is not being sold. Uh, 
orange indicates liquid and red indicates highly liquid. So as you can see, the majority not liquid is locked up cold storage, right? Uh, same way my Bitcoins are, right? I'm not touching them. Uh, obviously, look, I'm going to take profits, but the majority of folks are hodling. And we see the likes of Mass Mutuals, Guggenheim Fund, Paul Tudor Jones as Bill Miller, struck, Stanley Drucken Miller, and many others, right? Buying up as much as they can. Square, PayPal, Grayscale, all of that. You guys know the story there. So things are progressing. The strong hands are buying up. Weak hands are dumping. Same story, different bull market, but that's why you got to do your research. You got to uh, really understand what's happening. So something else, uh, Glassnode shared here. They said, while Bitcoin dipped in value today, on-chain fundamentals remain strong, pointing to a healthy network. Bitcoin mining difficulty and hash rate are at all-time highs. So things still healthy for the network because corrections are normal on the way up. Oh my gosh, I wish I could, uh, for some of you no new folks, I wish I could just have it seared into your head so you don't m invest with your emotions. It's just looking at the data and understanding what's happening. Now, here's some FUD coming from a UK regulator. And look at the timing of this, right? This right here, my friends, is a classic shakeout headline, right? They were probably sitting on this news for a while or the UK regulator decide to pour gasoline on the fire, so to speak, meaning they see the markets in a downturn. So now it's a time to put out some FUD, things to scare investors to shake them out. So UK regulator warns crypto investors risk losing all of their money. Oh my goodness. The UK's financial watchdog has a stark warning for consumers looking to profit from the latest crypto boom. Be ready to lose everything. Investing in crypto assets or investments and lending linked to them generally involves taking very high risk with investors' money, the Financial Conductor Authority said in a statement Monday. So it is a recent thing. He said, uh, whoever this person is, said Monday. So look at the timing, right? This is to shake you out, my friends. This right here is a 2017 headline. These are the things we were seeing back in 2017, even 2018, just to shake you out. And it's surprising that they're still trying to use this, even though uh, Brian Brooks, the head of the OCC, said no one's banning Bitcoin. They're going to regulate it. We see crypto is being talked about by the IMF and so on and so forth. So this is an outdated headline, right? I mean, if the guy came out and said, well, oh, you should be aware because quantum computing that would have been a better FUD headline because it would be new and not, not something that's like four years old. So anyway, just, just my opinion. But classic, classic shakeout headline here, my friends. Uh, I hope you see what's happening. Now, some interesting news from our friends at Backed, and they have not responded to me about the interview. I was in contact with them, but they've gone radio silent. And it's probably due to Kelly Loeffler's um, whole political career, so to speak, and all the nonsense there. Well, anyway, backed the digital asset marketplace launched by Intercontinental Exchange, the owner of the New York Stock Exchange in 2018, to become a publicly traded company via merger with VC VPC Impact Acquisition Holdings. Wow, this is interesting, guys. So we know Coinbase wants to do an IPO. We've heard Ripple wants to do an IPO. Uh, I think BitGo, some other companies, right? We, we've, we've talked about it that this year we could see some IPOs from crypto companies. Well, backed is doing it via the merger way. This is this is interesting. Um, I don't think anybody really saw this coming, and uh, excuse me, the block uh, breaks it down here. So, Bact is merging with VPC Impact Acquisition Holdings at a valuation of about 2.1 billion dollars. VPC, backed by investment firm Victory Park Capital, held its initial public offering in September 2020. In tandem with the announcement, Bact said that it has appointed. Gavin Michael, a former city executive, so city group, right? As its new CEO, Michael re replaces former backed interim CEO, David Clifton, who will join the combined company's board of directors. So this is a big move for cri the crypto market, even though backed has been slowed down by, look, due to COVID, they didn't launch their app, which would allow you to go into Starbucks by crypto, excuse me, buy coffee and Starbucks products with crypto. Um, and I also Kelly Loeffler's situation with, you know, because once again, her husband, Jeff Sprecher, they own the Intercontinental Exchange, which owns back. So you see the connection there. And, uh, you know, they've been kind of up and down. It, you know, this was highly anticipated to launch their app, all the good stuff. But 
Um, maybe they're just once again waiting for the political things attached to Kelly Loeffler to die down because if they go on a huge marketing campaign, you know the news is going to cover, oh, this is owned by the parent company of uh, the New York Stock Exchange, which is owned by Kelly Loeffler and all that. So you, you guys get it, right? This, there could be some bad PR there. Back further announced the targeted launch of its retail app, Backed Cash, in March of this year. And the firm said over 400,000 consumers have signed up for early access to the app. According to a Wall Street Journal report, Back plans to raise an additional $532 million as part of the deal to develop and market the app. So once again, they, they haven't gotten there, right? To date, the firm has raised a total of $482.5 million, according to Crunchbase. So they still got work to do, but this is a lot of cash they're raising, right? You think about it, near, near a billion here. And when they are ready to launch, you're going to see some big marketing campaigns from both Bact and Starbucks and, and the respective participants who are funding this, right? So while they, they are kind of like off the radar right now, they are a sleeping giant, in my opinion, and they will help push the adoption of crypto. So I'm still going to try to get some interviews with them. I think, once again, they're, they're slow rolling this thing due to Kelly Loeffler. But uh, let's see what you know how this plays out. Finally, guys, crypto custody firm graduates Singapore Monetary Authority's regulatory sandbox. So we are seeing across the globe, companies are launching, there's mergers, there's acquisitions, large investments. This is a great sign for the market, the crypto market's global. So that's why this idiot's comments, this UK regulator, is once again a headline to shake you out. When uh, around the globe, things are progressing, companies are getting investments. So it's a direct contradiction to what that person said. So Singapore-based Propine emerged from the mass regulatory, or I should say the MAS regulatory sandbox with a capital markets services license and an authorization to begin offering digital asset services to institutions. So a crypto custody provider and securities firm Propine has graduated. Why do they repeat this <laughs> content? It's so weird in writing this, whoever wrote this. Um, the Singapore-based securities for services firm for institutional clients has admitted entry to the MAS regulatory sandbox on November 8, 2019 and participated for just over a year before being granted approval to exit on January 7th, according to a recent post on the firm's website. Singapore financial law states a company must hold a capital market services license if it wishes to conduct business activities regulated under Singapore securities and Futures Act. Upon successful completion of the program, Propine gained a CMS license and will now begin to roll out its full range of services, including but not limited to digital asset custody, trade settlement facilitation, asset servicing, and services catering to global securities issuers. Guys, the infrastructure being built, record-breaking money being invested in this, and 99% of the world is not paying attention. Uh, you got the FUD headlines here to shake you out, right, to get you to sell and dump. And that's where the big boys are going to buy up, as we're seeing, right? The whales are accumulating, and uh, they're doing it in silence. They're not coming out saying, hey, I just bought the dip, right? They, they're doing it and while people are panic selling. So I hope you understand what's happening here and that by now, these headlines should not bother you. These, these are bullshit headlines. Look at the charts, look at the data, zoom out, look macro level. And uh, you can also go back and look at the headlines in 2017 calling uh, or the many times Bitcoin has been rolled off and called dead and the crypto has been going to go to zero and it's going to crash. And you got the likes of Peter Schiff who goes on TV and he's like, oh, Bitcoin's not worth anything. It's a bubble and this and that. Every market goes in a bubble, gold, real estate, stocks, whatever it is, right? There's bubbles in every market. So calling Bitcoin a bubble is like, that doesn't mean that it, it inherently has a problem or something's wrong with it or it doesn't have value. Every market goes in a bubble. Only an idiot uh, would not would go out and say that, like a Peter Schiff. Well, I shouldn't say he's an idiot because he could just be doing a smoke and mirrors move. I tweeted about it. I think Peter Schiff has a Bitcoin position, but he makes 
uh, or I should say he gets more attention and he builds more social clout by being a contrarian. And I think at a $100,000 price point or higher, he may do a 180 and just come out and say, hey, I have Bitcoin, right? He'll act like a fool now, be the contrarian, troll people. But um, guys, I've seen the smoke and mirrors move from many folks, JP Morgan, Jamie Dimon, and we, we've seen it. Those of us have been here for a while. A lot of people who were bashing Bitcoin and crypto and now that are on board. So we're headed to new all-time highs. Be patient. Zoom out. Make sure you're studying the data and the charts. Look at what's happening. Don't invest with your emotions. Invest with your head. Look at the data, the trends, the analytics, and uh, you know, look at what's what investments are being made. That's why I share this these news. Who who's getting regulatory approval? Who's getting I don't know five hundred and something million dollars here, right? Like backed. This is not making major headlines on CNN or Fox Business, right? They got an additional five hundred thirty-two million dollars. Why are people putting money into a crypto platform? Because they know this market's gonna take off. Anyway, guys, leave your thoughts and comments below. Do you think Bitcoin could go lower? You think we can head lower, guys? Um, maybe to twenty-five thousand, as I'm saying, or maybe thirty thousand is that bottom, right? And we bounce off and keep going up. Let me know what you guys think. Share this video, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.